Hey everyone, um, welcome to this kind of short series. Um, these are going to be much shorter videos on kind of very distinct topics uh, instead of my more, way more like longer kind of lecture style videos. Um, so let's talk about CSRF. Uh, you might be familiar with the changes that are being made in Chrome, but I'm just going to re-explain them. Um, and answer the question, is CR CSRF really dying? And if you don't watch the whole video, yes, not right now, but yes, in the next few months, next few years, we're going to see CSRF really become a non-issue. Right, so I'm sorry, what? What? <laughs> what? Why are you talking about CSRF? What is, what is this I should be aware of? Um, so Chrome 80, which is the most recent version of Chrome, is making a change. Um, and something called same site cookies. And this may off kill off CSRF bugs in the future. Um, but why? Why is it gonna? Why is it going to kill them off? What is a same site cookie? Um, so they're kind of difficult to explain. Um, but to kind of give you the kind of short explanation, Chrome will no longer send a cookie if the request comes from another website. So the way CSRF works is really that you have. Let me get my little. Uh, you have website one and you have your little user and whenever your user goes to that website Chrome or any other web browser will just add your cookie in here. So we abuse that in CSRF by basically creating a website too that calls that website and then for the user when they access that uh, we redirect them to website one which is our target the cookie will just get sent along. Um, so that's kind of how CSRF works. But let's have a look at in a little bit more detail. Um, so how do cookies work? How are they supposed to work? So you get to a login page on a website. And you know, you fill in your username and your password and you chat remember me. Remember me is what sends those cookies. Remember me is what's sending those cookies along. Um, and you log in and you log in successfully and it says welcome. So what's being what's happening here is then the cookie is being set. You know, you might be setting a username, you might be setting an ID, but something gets set here, right? And then whenever they you access that website, the cookie is saved and they go, oh, I'll just, I'll send that cookie as well to keep you logged in. And even, you know, two weeks later, three weeks later, it's still being sent. Um, depending on how long the expiry date is on the cookie, you can set it to expire as a developer, you can set it to expire whenever. So that's how cookies are supposed to work. Now, what you kind of see now is you get third party or cross site cookies. Um, and although we use those to exp we exploit them for CSRF, how are they, how are they supposed to work? So you log in uh, to myotherwebsite.com and you might see a login with mywebsite.com. So you know, you're login with Google, with uh, Twitter, with Facebook, you can automatically log in with another website. And what they do is they then redirect you to your mywebsite.com login. And you might be used to this on Google, on Google where it's like, are you sure you want to give them tick, 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 whatever. Um, so then you get, you go from this to this. And then because you're already logged in, it goes back and says, you know, login successful. And then you, my other website then changes to be a successful login screen. So your user accesses my other website and then it redirects you to my website. Now with that redirection, because uh, of the way web browsers work, with this redirection, we also send those cookies. <coughs> um, we also send those cookies as well. Uh, you know, we don't we don't just kind of invent cookies. We we specifically send them. Um, and then, okay, how do we abuse this flow to get CS CSRF to work? So a user accesses a malicious website, and our malicious website transfers the user, automatically redirecting them. So it's the same thing as this, this kind of good flow here, where we can log into another as another user, to really this bad flow here where we get redirected. Now. This one is redirecting us quite ha handily to our, our login page. Um, but actually, on this one, we're not going to a login page. We're going to uh, directly to an API to change an email address or do an account takeover. 
we might be adding in addresses and then editing orders um, to kind of steal something from a user. We might be adding credit cards or deleting credit cards. So we're doing something instead of redirecting it quite like harmlessly to whatever our like login page, we're actually doing something to the API that's changing the user's data. Um, so that's briefly how CSRF works. If you want kind of more info on how that bug works and how to exploit it, you can actually look at my video. I've got some examples of CSRF working there. Um, so what's changed? Like fundamentally, this this redirection no longer sends that cookie unless a developer wants it to be sent. Um, so the developer has to specifically say when they create the cookie same site equals none so they have no restrictions on it being from the same site by default these are going to be same site equals lax so you can't do this anymore this is not going to work you can do it like this if a developer is doing same site none on a cookie you can redirect there's also one that says uh, that the cookies have to be secure but that's probably not going to change an awful lot versus the same site stuff so what's the impact on CSRF? Um, so let's have a look at what these attributes can be. So this was our old default, none, which allows a website to redirect to another and will fill in the cookies. So a, even if you're on website yellow here, the cookies for website uh, green will still get sent if you'll have some content on website green. This is our CSRF attack. This is what allows it. Uh, Lax is the new default. So this is lax here. Cookies are no longer sent unless a user does a specific action um, uh, or top level navigation is how it's usually explained. So if you embed an image, a cookie won't get saved. So the trick to CSRF to do a get CSRF is actually to embed an image. Um, that won't work because it won't send cookies along with that kind of uh, request. However, if you click on a link, it will. So that's the kind of difference. Um, you can kind of think of that as this is what is supposed to happen, <laughs> basically. Um, and then we have strict. So strict means no third party cookies allowed. Now, same site has actually been in like the web for quite a long time. It's just really not used by developers. Um, so what's really happening is if they don't, if they don't do one of these, it's just going to default to lax. That's it, that's what's happening. Um, now, what we might see is we might see more developers thinking about this cookie property, um, specifically strict, uh, and looking at, well, you know, sometimes you can do things with lax, maybe you can create really convincing phishing website, um, and that still could be a bug, depending on what the impact might be. But a lot of developers might just go, well, lax is too, that might be too much for us. We only probably need st uh, strict. Um, and then non is probably going to eventually just not no longer be used. So what's really going to happen to CSRF? As I just said in my CSRF video, CSRF is already pretty widely prevented. Uh, a lot of development tools will automatically add CSRF tokens now. Uh, and as I mentioned, CSRF tokens basically require kind of... Um, you know, we have a website and a form, and then we have a little hidden field here that has a token inside. And when a user fills out that form and sends it to the, and it goes to the web, web, web server, the web server will read that token and just check that it's the token it's supposed to be. So it's already prevented. Um, it's quite easy to see if CSRF is impossible then. Um, by just looking and seeing whether or not there's a CSRF token. Uh, but this will be another level of prevention. Um, and it's probably in the future going to stop CSRF attacks. Um, there are some other attacks that really aren't going to be affected and ones that really are. But if you want to see those, I've got them on another slide. There's a very good article. So what about right now? What's going to change short term? CSRF will rem remain a valid bug. Uh, right now, it's only Chrome 80 that's got this change. However, Firefox and Edge and some other ones will be um, making those changes. And uh, other versions 
will still redirect with the cookie so you can probably submit them for the moment by saying you know look chrome uh, chrome is not vulnerable but firefox is and this is where you're going to change as web browsers implement it now developers are likely just going to set same site equals none temporarily until they have time to properly fix how their cookies work so likely in the short term it's still going to be an issue we're still going to see the same we're still going to see crsref on firefox we're still going to see it on edge at least until those changes have been made um and developers are likely going to be lazy developers as they always are uh, and set same site to none until they have time to fix it so csrf is become a non-issue in the future but right now it's probably okay so that was kind of a long explanation tldnr Chrome has made some changes to how it handles cookies. When you try to do a CSRF attack, the cookies won't be sent by default. This is only in Chrome, but there's plans for other web browsers. Developers will initially implement a hacky solution, so CSRF will still be a bug. But they will catch on, eventually. They always do. Eventually, they, they strip out, you know, your SQL injection stuff. So eventually, they will solve this as well. But this will prevent most CSRF attacks. Um... If you want to read some more interesting kind of um, articles, I highly recommend these three, um, depending on what you want to learn about. So Reconless, which is a new blog by File Descriptor, Ron Chan, and Ed Overflow. Um, they really discuss the changes in a bug bounty context. I'm really doing this at a beginner level, but they go way more into detail about specific bugs that are being affected and related bugs and what's going to be the problem. Um, and then web.dev same site cookie recipes and same site cookies explained by uh, Rowan Mearwood. Um, they change they discuss them in same site cookie change and it's kind of developers content and it ha context and it has some really nice graphics and explanations. Uh, and then Google Chrome has produced a video. Um, all these links are gonna be in the description, but uh, which discusses the change in really a Chrome context. You know what does this mean for Chrome? Um, and it's quite a good explanation as well. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope that you found this useful. I'm trying to make more of these short, shorter videos interspersed with the really long uh, lectures to kind of give you a little bit of a little bit of a uh, uh, something, but not so much that takes up a lot of my time to produce. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.